Here's another optimization problem, and this is, again, one that's pretty typical. You're going to see variations of this in most calculus textbooks. And the situation that's described here is we have something out in the water. In this case, it's an offshore well, and they say that the well is at point W. So we have point W out in the water. We have a straight shoreline here. And what we're told is that the well is six miles from the closest point on the shoreline, which, of course, would be horizontally uh, over to the shoreline there and they call this point point A. So what we know is we know that this distance from the well straight into the shoreline is going to be six total miles. The oil is to be piped to a shore point B, this is worded kind of bad, to a point B that's on the shoreline that is eight miles from A. So we'll put point B up here and we know that the distance from A to B is eight total miles. Uh, what we're going to try to do here is we're going to try to construct this pipeline so that we've minimized the cost of installing it. So the optimization question that's easy is how can you minimize the amount of pipeline needing to be used? Well, that would be straight line from W to B. But it's going to cost a lot more to build the pipeline under the water than it is to build it on the land. It's going to cost $100,000 per, $100, per mile to build under the water, and then it's going to cost only $75,000 per mile to build it over land. So if we're trying to minimize the cost in order to install this pipeline, what we're likely going to want to do is build diagonally from the well to the shoreline to some point that the problem statement defines to be point P, and then we're going to build straight up from point P the rest of the way to point B. So it's going to cost $100,000 to build this many miles of pipeline, and then it's going to cost $75,000 to build this amount of pipeline. With any optimization problem, uh, if you can draw a picture, you're going to want to do that, and we have just done that. And then you're also going to want to develop a formula for what you're trying to, in this case, minimize, and that's cost. We want to minimize the cost of installing this pipeline. So the formula is, is going to have to have uh, a variable that goes into it. And what I notice down here is I notice a, a nice little right triangle. And what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to call this distance from point P to point A, po uh, I'm going to call it x. So we'll just define that to be the variable x. And then what I can say is that this distance right here, the rest of the way from P to B, is going to be the full 8 miles from A up to B minus the x that we've already gone from A to P. So this is going to be 8 minus x right here. So what can we do as far as a cost function is concerned? Well, our cost function is going to be $100,000 times the number of miles that we're building under the water. So that's going to be whatever the hypotenuse of this right triangle turns out to be. And using Pythagorean theorem, you have x squared plus 6 squared equals the hypotenuse squared. If I take the square root of x squared plus 6 squared, or x squared plus 36, that'll give me the length of the pipeline that we're building underwater. So the cost of building this pipeline is going to end up being 100,000 times the total number of miles of pipeline being built underwater, plus the additional cost to build the pipeline that remains on land. So that's going to be $75,000 times the 8 minus x miles that we have to go to get the rest of the way from point P to point B. And so we have this cost function. The cost function only depends on the variable x. What we're going to want to go ahead and do is we're going to want to figure out uh, what value of x makes our cost function have a derivative equal to 0 or a derivative that's undefined. Now before we do anything with derivative, let's, let's think about endpoints here. So if we're considering endpoints, uh, is there a range that x has to be between? Well, if x is 0, that would mean we're building straight from the well to point A, and then straight from point A the rest of the way up to point B. So the smallest value that x can take on is going to be 0. We're not going to want to build diagonally down this way. That doesn't make sense. There's no way that that's going to minimize cost. But maybe if we're in the water, under the water for the minimum distance, which would be 6 miles from W to A, and then x would be 0, uh, maybe that will minimize cost since we'd be building the minimum amount of pipeline under the water. So 0 could be the smallest value that x could take on. And 
there is a biggest value that X could take on, and that's going to be 8. It's not going to make sense to, to let X be above 8, right? If X is above 8, if X were something like 9, that would mean we're building from W up here, 9 miles, which would actually be 1 mile north of point B, and then back down the shoreline to point B. That's not going to minimize cost. So X is going to have to range between these values. Uh, maybe minimum cost is going to happen when we build straight from here to point B. In that case, X would be 8, or maybe it's going to be when X is 0, and that would be being built straight from W to point A. So these would be the, the endpoints for our interval. We also want to find our critical numbers. So if we take the derivative of C with respect to X, right, the derivative of cost with respect to the variable X, this is a quantity to the one-half power. So using a quick chain rule, if I multiply $100,000 by one-half and then subtract one from one-half, from that original exponent, just using a power rule for derivatives here, I'm going to leave the inner function inside that set of parentheses. It's just a little chain rule. And then I need to finish my chain rule by multiplying by the derivative of what sits here. And the derivative of x squared is 2x. The derivative of 36 is 0. So there's the derivative of this term. Uh, the derivative of this term, if I distributed this $75,000 in, $75,000 times 8 is going to give me a constant. The derivative of that constant is 0. But then $75,000 times negative x is going to be negative 75,000x. And the derivative of that is going to be negative 75,000. So here is our derivative. Uh, we want to figure out if this derivative is undefined. So I'm going to clean this derivative up just a little bit. Uh, this first term here has a 50,000 and a 2x. I'm going to multiply those together and get 100,000 times x. I'm going to kick this set of parentheses that's raised to this negative power. I'm going to kick that across the fraction bar into the denominator. And I'll change the sign on this exponent back to a positive one half then. And once it's back to a positive one half, I can go ahead and change it back to a root. And then this 75,000 is just going to have to stay as a separate term. So here's a simplified form of our derivative. We do have an x in the denominator of this derivative. But this denominator is never going to be 0, right? When you square something, you're always going to end up with a positive value. And then you're adding something to a positive value. So you're never going to have this, this denominator equal 0. You're never going to have a derivative that's undefined. But you do have to figure out when your derivative is equal to 0. So if you're figuring out when your derivative is equal to 0, uh, I think it makes sense to add the 75,000 to this side. Um, then I'm then going to get the root out of the denominator. So I'm going to multiply both sides by x squared plus 36. And if we're continuing to go through this process without a calculator, uh, I notice that I can get rid of this root by squaring both sides of my equation. And that'll leave me with an x squared on this side and an x squared on that side. And those would be like terms. So I think that's something that we'll go ahead and carry out here. So we'd end up with 75,000 squared. And I'm just going to write that as <coughs> 75,000 squared. And when I square the square root, square root goes away. So I'm left with x squared plus 36. Uh, and then over here, we're going to have 100,000 squared times x squared. So if I distribute the 75,000 in, the 75,000 squared into the set of parentheses, I'm looking at 75,000 x squared. I'm going to move that over here. So I'm going to have 100,000 squared x squared minus the 75,000 squared times x squared. Uh, and then over on this side, I'm just going to be left with 75,000 squared distributed into the 36 or times 36. Uh, these are like terms. I'm going to go ahead and do some work on the calculator here and try to solve this for x. So I'm going to combine these coefficients, uh, divide by, divide this side by that value, and then take the square root of each side in order to figure out what x equals. And so what that will actually leave you with on this side is a 46.2857 uh, equaling x squared. And then you would have to take the square root of both sides in order to solve that for x. You know, Technically, you have to consider a plus or minus square root, but we're dealing with an application here. It only makes sense to have a positive answer.
So we'll get 6.803 as our approximation for x. So when x is this value, our derivative of cost is equal to 0. So what we can do to wrap this up is we can construct a sign chart for dc dx, the derivative of cost with respect to x. Uh, the only time when the sign of this derivative can change is as we cross the value of 6.803. We know that the smallest value that x can take on is 0. The biggest value x can take on is 8. If you pick a value that is between 0 and 6.8, and you evaluate the derivative at that x, what you're going to see is that the sine of dc dx is negative. And if you pick a value like 7 in between 6.8 and 8, you're going to see that your derivative is positive. So what that means is your cost of constructing this pipeline is going to decrease as you let x increase from 0 to 6.8. And then your cost is going to increase as you let x increase from 6.8 up to 8. That is going to tell us that the minimum cost of building this pipeline is going to occur if we let x right here equal 6.803. So if x is about 6.803 miles uh, from point A, we're going to have built the pipeline for a minimum cost. The only other thing to do here, if we go back up, it does say what will the cost be. Well, if you want to figure out what the cost will be, you know that x is going to be this 6.803 value. Here's your cost formula. Toss 6.803 in place of your x's, and you're going to have your answer. I didn't bother checking the endpoints, only because think about what this tells you. You have a cost at 0, and then the cost decreases till you get to 6.803, and then your cost increases till you get to 8. So there's no way the minimum can occur at 0 or 8, since we decrease from here to here, and then increase from that point forward. There is the value of x that you need. Only other thing to do would be to evaluate your cost function here to get that total cost.